All right, so 5.30, we'll call the meeting to order, finance committee meeting, um, and uh, the people in attendance. Um, Linda, can you stop sharing for one minute so I can see? I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, myself, Amy Biden, Paul Benjamin is here, Dylan Barstow Mans is here. I see, uh, I think I saw Val Valerie Hood is here, and Alexi Levine is here. So we're all here. Wonderful. So the first uh, group that we are going to be meeting is the Park and Rec. And so from Park and Rec is um, Greg, I guess, is here, which is great. And I don't know if we have any commissioners here or not that would be joining us. Um, so so for if, if I can just say for everyone's sake, um, I will sh be showing the, the budget part, like what you're looking at right now. And some did send narratives and I know they went out to the members. And so um, I'm going to stay on the budget though, unless a, unless a presenter asked me specifically to show something that they sent. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So Greg, if you want to go ahead and um, start presenting the budget, just go down your line items and anything that we're just taking notes on anything that you'd like to tell us about what's changing and why the numbers have changed from the previous year. Okay. Thanks. Um, thanks guys. So in, in going through the budget, a lot of the, a lot of the items we've, we've kept the same. Um, the part of it was uh, obviously with, with COVID, there was a thing, I know the, the hours, the biggest change is the hours for the, the director were cut to down to 30 hours. Um, the biggest change in the budget uh, request is to increase that to the, I believe it's 37 and a half hours um, on that, that top line that increases it from, I'm sorry. From 38, 336. Right. To 54, 22. Correct. So do I have it wrong down here when I said to 40 hours, this is 37 and a half. I may have made a mistake. Okay. okay. So does that, I have one question on that. Does that include uh, the COLA or does that just include hours? That's the COLA. That's the COLA. Greg requested, this is his request. And then uh, the Carolyn's COLA went on to everyone and the difference between the request and the T and the recommendation is COLA. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I don't have any questions about that. Do we want to go down to the next line item? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to see stuff on my screen. Um, uh, school use custodial. I believe that's the that's the same. Um, oh, the yeah. Um, same number of programs, and, and what I'm trying to get our, our use our fees the fees to cover a lot of our expenses um so there's not really into it really well even though we're increasing programs um we should need to increase the budget for a lot of these items um like i said because we're, we're we're wanting to make those up in the in the fees we're charging um for for those programs um tuition meetings um, should be the same um Guys. I'm sorry, guys. I'm having a hard time reading my stuff. That's no worries, Greg. I don't really see a whole lot of changes on your budget. I mean, it's really small little things. <laughs> so the thing is, that's really probably what you're here to talk to us about is really just the, the focus in on where um, that the park and rec had at one point, um, maybe 37 and a half, we lowered it to 30 and you're requesting the hours back to the 37 and a half if i'm right right um, then that's that's the biggest thing um and those most definitely can be utilized um I mean, there's administrative work obviously needs to be done but now you know we have increased the the number of the program significantly and we have plans to continue increasing programs the the quality and the, the you know and the number of programs that we're running um, it's important that I be there for a lot of those things. It's, it's challenging with 30 hours to, for me to be there. You know, for example, 
I'm already at, at 30 hours this week, but I've got um, coaches clinics I'm running tomorrow night. I've got pickleball I'm running tomorrow night. Um, Saturday, we've got um, basically an eight hour day Saturday because we do, we're doing free clinics all afternoon. And we have our three on three tournament all morning. So there, there's just a lot of, I, I think to serve the community, it's pretty important that, that I be at those things to, to run those things, those programs effectively. Um, I have worked hard to, to, to create the best, the best programs, the best product I can, you know, through parks and recreation. I want to continue that. Speaking as someone who's been using some of Greg's programs recently uh, in the town, it's, he's been doing an incredible job. Um, not only getting the word out, but adding on programs, um, I've been able to use the men's basketball league this year on Wednesday nights. And we've had such good, uh, uh, feedback and attendance at these. We've actually extended them past uh, March to May. It's a really great community event to get together and play with a bunch of uh, guys uh, 30 plus. And um, yeah, also the fit through the holidays challenge was really great. I know my wife, Denise and I, we both did that. We appreciated that. And it was fun to see the ice rink that went up uh, next to uh, the school uh, over the winter. Um, so I really appreciate all the stuff that you've, you've been able to put through Greg um, love to see what else you could do with uh, those additional hours for sure. No, and I would send something out kind of with listed the, the programs that have been done in the past that we're continuing to do. And all I've added some of the things we've done to this point that have been new. And then, then some of the things we're planning um, through the rest of, of, of 2022 that are new. Right? And we can do a lot. And I think that, like I said, it's right now it's important because, you know, people have been cooped up for a while and they do want to participate in those things. You know, we had for, for basketball this year, um, you know, when they had, last year time they had a program, there were 32 participants. We had 80 registrations this year. You know, that, that's, that's, that's a lot. You know, our, our free camps that we ran, our free baseball camps, we had, I think, what, 75 um, registrations in the hitting camp and the free hitting camps we did and 69 registrations in the camp we're doing tomorrow. So it is making an impact on the community. And like I said, it's, it's going to get better and better, especially if, if I can have more hours to, to not only plan more and, and coordinate more, but also be at those activities and, and, and you know, take on that role more aggressively. I think that's, that'll make a significant impact. Greg, I'm Valerie, and I just wanted to say that I've been uh, reading about your programs, and I'm going to come play pickleball one of these days. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so, Dude, but it's I, a blast. I, it is so fun. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I've heard. I have heard. And I just wanted to say thank you, too. It has been, uh, it's been exciting to read about them, and I, it sounds like you're doing a fantastic job. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. This is uh, Diane Karis Chokis. I've been a park and rec commissioner for, I think, over 10 years now. Um, I really appreciate those kind words, Dylan and Valerie. Um, it really is great that Greg is getting us a lot of visibility with um, social media as well, and really taking an initiative to get some great programs um, started for the town. I think I might try pickleball too, Valerie. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... Um, it definitely is, is great to see um, all the initiatives that Greg has. And I just want to echo what he's saying about the time to be able to fit in everything that he has to do. And we mm -hmm. definitely feel as a department, especially during COVID, that we stepped up to the plate to try and contribute and give back as much as we could to try and help save um, some funds. But now as things are opening back up and the demand is there, not only from uh, children of the town, but also adults. Um, as we're offering more programs, we definitely need the time back. So I appreciate the consideration for that. Great. Yeah. Um, wonderful. Uh, I saw Steve on the line. Did you want to add anything? Are you good there um, on the call? Thank you, Amy. No, I just uh, I want to commend Greg and uh, appreciate all the town support. Um, we did give the hockey rink a go and the skiing and everything else. Um, it's from like we've always done from kids from two to 92. We, we try to cater, um, hopefully get some more of those uh, bus tours. Um, and I enjoyed the bus tour to the harbor. And that was really good. We went with the senior center because I am getting up there to be a senior. So I fit in then the bus. But I, 
I just really am excited about the whole thing. And um, it's really hard. And I think everyone recognizes that, Greg, the work that he's putting in um, and just uh, we need to expand and uh, appreciate any help we can get. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, th thank you very much. Uh, it, it looks great. And um, uh, I don't think we have any more questions. We're very happy with how things are going with Park and Rec. So, so awesome. looking good. Good. Thank you for all your hard work, Greg. It's been much appreciated. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. So we're going to move on and we will uh, let's go to the library. Hi, folks. Can you all hear me? Oh, yes. Thank you, Patrick, because I'm not when Linda has the thing up, I can't tell who's here. So <laughs> thank okay, you. Okay. Yeah, so so I'm you. here and I, I believe Allison Donteven and yes, our uh, trustee chair is also here. Okay, great. Um, so the first thing that I, I want to mention with our budget, um, I mean, as as background, I did provide a narrative uh, to you folks that kind of gave you a sense of where we're at. Um, obviously, it's, it's kind of a an awkward time coming out of the pandemic where we were previously, um, you know, working behind closed doors uh, as all the town departments were. And so it was hard to know moving into a new facility just how busy we would be. I mean, we expected to be busier, but again, we had no way of knowing with all of the uncertainty with COVID and, and everything else. So when we put forward our budget um, last year for, for FY22, you know, we just kind of had to stick with what we had been doing previously because we didn't know how to plan for it. So when we finally opened in June, uh, opened to the public in June, we were, you know, in the middle of a budget year, um, and we were immediately, uh, we were immediately slammed. I mean, our our usage of the library is up massively. Um, our borrowing statistics are like through the roof. So we we've broken records month after month um, since we've been reopened. And uh, we have a very small staff. So one of the things that we did in the middle of the year uh, was to uh, use funds that the trustees have for discretionary purposes to increase one of our staff positions, the youth services coordinator who works with mostly primarily with teenagers, but also with uh, in coordination with the children's library and on children's programming, uh, as well as just frontline you know, circulation desk work. And we increased that position from, I believe 16 hours previously up to 27 and it became a benefited position. And, and um, we felt that we needed to do that because we, we needed greater, um, greater coverage. Uh, we needed more, you know, connectivity between the staff, you know, having more staff there overlapping so that things weren't, um, you know, we weren't dropping stitches as far as customer service and everything else. So, um, you know, that was paid for previously with state aid funds um, for, I guess, less than six months of the past year. And we're, so if, as you'll see, um, our part-time library salaries has taken a jump here from, uh, in FY 22, 87, six up to, uh, the town administrator's recommendation of 97, uh, 12 for, uh, in order to fund that increase. We haven't increased other staff positions, but that, that's kind of like the major increase. And, and one way we uh, tried to balance this against, um, you know, so that we didn't bust our budget was to sort of slim down some of the other, uh, some of the other items in our, in our budget. So things like um, computer, computer, computer resource services, which is sort of like, you know, computer maintenance and that sort of thing. Um, tuition and meetings, programs and activities office supplies, because we have, we have, you know, the trustees have the same funds that could fund the increase in hours. The trustees have some discretionary funds. So if we have to fill a gap somewhere, we can lean on that a little bit. And of course, the reason that we have those funds from state aid is because we meet our certification from, from the state every year. And they, you know, they pay us six or $8,000 a year uh, for being good stewards of library services in Hadley. So that's sort of what we're hoping to do because it's at this point, um, in order to maintain a high level of customer service, we, we really need to have, um, uh, you know, a, a slightly more robust staff. And I think this is really sort of the, the minimum that we need based on how, how busy we are and how involved our services have become. 
um, particularly with, um, you know, there are elements of our service now that are completely new to us that we didn't have before in the old library, and yet it's more or less the same staff that are having to address all of these services. So I'll give you an example, um, which is we now have multiple meeting rooms that can be reserved by the public uh, and used for meetings or smaller ones can be used for um, small conferences or for quiet study. And that has become like a large part of what we do. It's become a, a big element and a, a large um, you know, piece of the pie as far as how you know, staff are using their time. Uh, we're even you know, seeing a lot of meetings, other town departments and committees are using the library um, to hold their meetings. And we think that's absolutely fantastic, um, but it is you know, an increase in the service that we provide, something that we didn't generally do in the old building because we didn't have the space for it. So, um, so there's that, that's the major change. And I think that's what you're gonna see here where you, where you see like the big increase on that one line and then the, you know, the big subtractions on some of the others, that's kind of like our plan to do this and also do it without, you know, busting the budget. Um, so I think that's, that's really all I have to say. Um, I, I also wanna remind you all that um, as always, there is a, a formula that we use. I, I alluded to our certification, library certification with the uh, Mass Board of Library Commissioners. And there are formulas that they use for us to maintain that certification. Um, you know, there are things that we have to do like maintain a certain number of hours, et cetera. But we also have to maintain a certain budget level. Uh, and we, we satisfy that with this, with the budget that we put forward. Uh, and, and that's always, a, you know, something that is first and foremost in my mind when I put the budget together to make sure that we maintain our certification and, and that allows, uh, of course, Hadley Library patrons to not only use our library, but also, to, you know, to go to Northampton or Hadley or uh, not Hadley, Northampton or Amherst uh, and use those library services as well. No questions asked. So we want to maintain that, um, you know, reciprocal borrowing privilege with the neighboring communities. So I think that's all I have to say. Does, does anyone have, Allison, do you have anything to say or um, do, you, do you folks have any questions? Yeah, I was just going to add something. Um, oh, yeah. Is that so the increase is really for our um, youth services librarian, as Patrick mentioned, the majority of her time is spent on teen programming and with the teens. Mm -hmm. And when Patrick first came to us as trustees to, you know, say that he was a little nervous about his ability to meet the demands with the current, uh, you know, structure, we all talked about this. And one of the things that we felt is that, you know, this is often an area that's been highlighted by the MBLC in general, even before the pandemic as a, a population that's underserved by libraries. And then with all of this information coming out around the pandemic and how difficult it's been for kids and their lack of support, um, you know, we do have a, a children's librarian who works, you know, all, mostly full time hours. And so we wanted to sort of try to bring up the, the level for the youth services librarian as well. We ourselves had seen the huge jump in um, the usage of the library by the teens, which is great, um, but they do need their, their own support. So, um, so we basically encourage Patrick to say, if, if we're gonna move forward with this, how else can we cut without cutting you know, quality? And that's the budget that you see in front of you. So I have a question about the computer resources uh, being cut back. Do you think that'll just be that just because there are new computers, this is something that we can do for maybe a year or two while they're still new and something that'll probably be added on on later uh, once they kind of age a little bit more? Yeah, I, th I do think that's right. I mean, the, as you say, the computers are uh, brand new. We, we have them, uh, they arrived. Um, I'm, I've lost track of when they arrived, but they are less than a year old. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're at this point, they're fairly trouble free. We have uh, a consultant that we work with, someone who is a, uh, a staff member at the Jones Library in Amherst, and he does all of their, their IT, you know, their, their in-house IT stuff, and he specializes in libraries. So he, because he knows um, about our context, he, you know, which is specialized, and, and, you know, our services are provided by CWMARS, the library consortium that we belong to, mm -hmm. he's able to you know, work on that, whereas it might be more difficult for Northeast IT. He's also extremely affordable. So, um, so when we call him in to do, you know, updates or some sort of a, a fix, he's, he's extremely reasonable. And I, I think that, um, you know, probably overall our costs for those kinds of services would be under $1,000 for a year at most at this point. 
Uh, and at this point, I'd like to just, you know, start with the, the $400 that I put down. And then if we have to dig into our state aid to, you know, do something unforeseen, uh, I don't think that that will be a problem. But yeah, I think ultimately I'd like to see, you know, some of these things inch back up so that they are fully covered in the future. But my highest priority was the staffing. Absolutely. And then the office supplies, that line item coming down so drastically, is that just because of startup office supplies of the new building uh, that we saw the spike in 22 and just bringing it down for that? Or are you cutting in areas for this upcoming year? Uh, it's, it's similarly, I'm, I just tried to, to, to trim it down to the bones so that we could get this, you know, approved, get this new budget through. Uh, and, and again, as I say, we have some, um, some ability to fund these things. So if, you know, if we do run out of rubber bands or whatever, you know, we can, we can get those. Great. Yeah. A lot of these items that are unpredictable, like office supplies or the com computer resources, um, those are things that are much more easily funded by sort of our, either our state. Uh, appropriation that we have for the libraries or through fundraising. Our programs, for example, we've really been relying heavily on the Friends um, and their fundraising to support a lot of our programming. So again, I know that it, seeing all these cuts, you know, make, make you wonder, are you going to be getting the services that the town needs? And, um, you know, the trustees are 100% behind this budget and are willing to, you know, um, come in, the, not just the trustees, but the trustees and the friends come in and um, make sure that the library has what they need in the areas that we are cutting. Nope. That's a good, that's a good point. And uh, I just, I, I'm sorry, I had to step away for one second, but I, I don't know if you said this, but that is true. So the, the programming line specifically, you know, the friends have um, have become active again after the pandemic, and uh, they have new leadership, and they've they've stepped up in a big way to help us fund some of the programs that we do that normally would have been paid for out of the programming budget. And I think at one point, I don't know what the highest was that we ever had for programming, but I think it was three or four thousand dollars at one point. And now a big piece of that uh, will be picked up by the friends, which is a very appropriate role for them. Great. I have no other questions. I, I have one question, but it's not with the line items right here. Where where do you stand with your solar? Um, good question. I guess that question should go to Carolyn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can answer that. So the, the library and the senior center are both moving towards having solar. That was the original intent for those buildings. Um, and so we were looking at options as far as going out to bid, but um, as I've been meeting with the climate change committee and them working towards getting towards green community certification, we kind of bumped into a situation where there might be other options that might be more beneficial for the town and provide um, a better cost savings that we're exploring. Jane Nevin Smith uh, is very involved um, with me working on that. Um, so, you know, her coming from the senior center perspective, but really um, that is her, her, a real strong passion of hers to pursue that. So that's what we're working on right now. We really want to explore all the options. Mm -hmm. having, having solar on municipalities, um, it's kind of a unique situation on, on individual buildings. So um, we just want to explore as much as possible. And with the library, we were also waiting. Um, there was some roof uh, issues that we needed to get addressed through insurance and stuff. So um, we're definitely pursuing it. Jane and I met last week and the week before, mm -hmm. so we'll continue to do that. And I'll keep you updated. But we want to make sure it's the most, the best for the for the, um, the municipal and in the the budget, obviously. Are they still is there still room in the. Um from from the project itself for Austin, funding? I mean, is there funding for it? Yes, we yeah. have the money for the solar array. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. That would be it for me. Um, well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, and um, I, I I do see that you guys have been doing a lot with the, the kids and I think that's a, a definite need for the kids. So um, I know that they go after school um, and spend a lot of time there. And I think it's a good safe place for them to be. So that's good. 
Absolutely. All right. Um, Wonderful. Can, can I ask? Can I ask Amy? Because Dylan just said, "Can I share on the screen?" Are you not seeing the library budget on the screen sharing? No, we're seeing it, Linda. I was just asking about uh, in that email. I wanted to see if you could send it as an attachment uh, because I was following along on my second screen. Oh, oh, oh I see. I see. You want it by email? Okay. All right. But it's, but it's fine. I've I've adapted. I've had, to I've had so many time. issues with this tonight. I thought maybe that wasn't it. Okay. Yes, actually, I can send it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, unless the uh, library has anything else to add, I think uh, we'll move, we'll go to uh, schools would be next on our agenda. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Have Thank a good night. you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you yeah. finance subcommittee for having me here. I have to tell you, my computer was just making a strange noise. So if it mm -hmm. dies, uh, for some reason, and I have to restart, you can move on to somebody else and I'll just go to the back of the queue. I hope that doesn't happen. I, I was afraid that noise was mine. I've had so many other issues here. Um, and I was one of ours. I assume you'd I, rather have the other, uh, your longer form of the budget up. Is that right? That's all right. I believe people have it. The, the finance subcommittee has it. So I can just speak to major changes overall in lines. So that's okay, Linda, you can stay in the document that you're in or uh, that. Well, is it, is it showing now? It is, I don't know that oh. they can see the whole thing, but that's fine, uh, okay. this is perfect. Okay. Uh, so in general, um, first of all, again, thank you. And I really wanna say uh, thanks to my colleagues, Greg and Patrick, I know Patrick's off the call, but I will say that those programs from Park and Rec and the library are a tremendous benefit to the students of Hadley Public Schools. So I am deeply appreciative of all the work that they do, that their boards do, and that their employees do, because it definitely benefits our students. Our budget this year, the first uh, part of this overview is I provide you with information on what has changed in the function subtotals for the school department budget from fiscal year 22 to fiscal year 23. And if you continue to scroll down, I can talk to you about some of the larger changes, which is actually on page three of the documents you were sent. Um, and that's the explanation of changes to function subtotals that are greater than 5%. I know that's hard to read and that there may be public watching this later. So I'll talk about some of the, the, the bigger changes. So we do see a decrease in finance and business. Um, we are looking at options in terms of bookkeeping on the school department side. And the option that we have in the budget is the less expensive of two options. And that's what we budgeted for at this point. In elementary and secondary teaching services, which is always the largest increase because that's the vast majority of our employees. That's where you find all of the teachers, related service providers, and all of the educational support professionals and classroom assistants, so the vast majority of the staff. That reflects step and lane changes for our, our educational support professionals and our teachers. The school department has steps and lanes like you would most likely see in the police department, typical of collective bargaining agreements. It also uh, includes a 3% COLA. Uh, our contracts have yet to be ratified, but that looks like the direction that we're headed in. I will tell you that that reflects what we do when we look at COLA as we look at consumer price index inflation. We look at last 12 months trailing. We use the same 12 month previous snapshot over several years. So the, the what's called CPIW. So for um, clerical and urban wage earners, which is what's recommended to use when you're looking at uh, making adjustments for inflation. If you do a look back over the last three years, looking at a September to September snapshot, it's roughly about 2.97%. If you look back five years, it's about 2.88. Of course, that doesn't take into consideration what's happened with inflation over the last few months, but I just wanted you to know that we never arbitrarily just adopt any sort of COLA. We have a way of um, doing an analysis that our goal is to be fiscally responsible, but also to be fair. Um, professional development, that has, uh, we've 
invested more funds in professional development in fiscal year 23. We are seeing that the needs of students have, have increased significantly as we came back to school. We were in school all last year, but as we've come back to full days um, and post pandemic, we are seeing significant needs among students. We have increased our textbook line. This does not include uh, the largest expense that we will pay for uh, out of op the operating budget this year. This is primarily replacing consumables for the most part, books in secondary English, for example, that just get too tattered and they're falling apart. And again, consumables and mathematics at the elementary school. We are looking to make a significant purchase of new curriculum in English language arts at Hadley Elementary. You don't see that in the FY23 budget. That expense will be somewhere between 60 and $70,000. That will come out of operating this year and not, it is not something included in fiscal year 23. Um, guidance services increase, uh, reflect step lane and COLA. On psychological services, I do want to point out that um, in past budgets, we had, I would say erroneously, we had a position in elementary and secondary teaching services that actually was a behavioral health position. It didn't belong there. It belonged in the function subtotal of psychological services. You're not seeing an increase of a position in that line. We just moved uh, a position from elementary and secondary teaching services into uh, psychological services. Custodial services, we see a decrease there. Um, and actually we sometimes, outsourcing saves us money and sometimes it doesn't. So we moved from using a contracted service provider to hiring a part-time position in-house. Heating of buildings, I'm glad to hear the town's looking at investing in solar because heating of buildings is the wild card that we're looking at for next year. When we built these budget assumptions and we turned them into the town, it was in December. In December, we looked at uh, energy futures and it looked like we would probably at that time, if we had to buy oil at that time, it would be about a 25% increase. Right now in fiscal year 22, we're locked in at $1.64 per gallon. I just checked the prices before I got on this call. If we were to buy today, it would be $2.93 per gallon. So that's a 79% increase, not a 25% increase. At this point in time, we don't intend to lock in until we are hoping for reasons that I include in that paragraph. I mean, I'm not, I certainly don't have a crystal ball, but there are some indications that we may see, we did see energy prices starting to go down, they ticked up again, and we're hoping that there'll be some policy initiatives that would allow us to lock in if we decide to lock in at a better time, or we may just, uh, wait it out. Utility services also reflects increases in energy costs. An increase to the maintenance of grounds line reflects the increased costs associated with maintaining our new athletic fields. Our tuitions always reflect changes in student enrollment and in out of district programs. For local contribution, the increase is 2.99%. I know that uh, the town has many wonderful departments and programs that it would like to invest in. And I know that um, certainly no town has unlimited resources. Uh, we do always want to present a budget that we feel is fiscally responsible. We did last year present a 0% increase and we're happy to return, return funding to the town last year. So local last year from fiscal year 21 to fiscal year 22 was a 0% increase. This year local, we are requesting a 2.99% increase. The total budget increase, uh, operating budget increase is actually closer to 1.45%. Um, and that's an overview on the budget. I can say that um, I do feel as though the investments that we're making are paying off. Um, in terms of enrollments, in terms of children choosing into the district, um, ch children choosing to stay in the district, um, and in some of our performance measures for our students. So I do feel that our investments are paying off in terms of academic outcomes for students, social and emotional development, 
and what we're seeing in terms of school choice and enrollment. The forever fight that we face is um, just uh, foundation enrollment. So that means the number of school age children that live in town. And there are a whole host of complex factors that sometimes can influence that. But um, projections from the New England School Development Council indicate that um, we should start seeing an uptick in that over the next decade. So that's really welcome news. And I appreciate you listening and I'm happy to answer any questions. Anybody have questions? I have no questions and I'd like to thank you for once again, um, the fiscal controls that you've been able to do with, um, while still maintaining what is one of the area's best school systems, in my opinion. So thank you. Oh, thank you. That means a lot that it's nothing to do with me except for when it goes wrong. And I really mean that <laughs> with the teachers and the staff, our administrators and the families. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I should have said, Ethan Percy, Percy I apologize, school committee member who's our finance liaison is here as well, if you have any questions for him. So, Annie, I was hoping maybe um, just just very briefly, if you don't mind, could you um, just touch base on um, just a few of the like where the school is and what we expect in the future for like capital and things like that nature? Um, yes, yes, I am happy to do that. So you can also on the capital side of things. Um, now I'm jokingly going to say, apparently a solar array, I might like one of those if um, energy continues to climb like this. <laughs> but that in all seriousness, we, um, there, you've probably heard that people are of different opinions. Hopkins Academy is a, is a fairly, is an older building. And so some folks have asked the question, does it make sense to have new build or a different or a renovation? Should we look at new build? Should we look at renovation? What are the needs of the building? We had Colliers, a company that does facilities assessments across the Commonwealth. They might do them nationally, and they've done a number of them in Massachusetts. We had them come out and do um, an A to Z assessment of Hopkins Academy, just Hopkins Academy. They will be presenting to the school committee on April 25th. The um, short version is that it looks like uh, roughly, they prioritize needs and they, they looked at everything. I'm talking all the way down to suggesting painting doors. So that's the level of detail we're talking about. Big things like HVAC and locker rooms and small things like painting doors or replacing doors. And uh, they created three buckets, priority one, two, and three, with priority three being things that could be three to five years out. And uh, the total of all things was $9 million dollars. Um, and as much as that sounds like, yikes, that's a ton of money, it really, I mean, a new building, as I've said, is from 70 to $100 million. So uh, I actually was surprised that the recommended renovations um, over that time period were not more expensive. The school committee will get, be getting a report from Colliers on, at their April 25th meeting. And I will be sharing the report that Colliers gives with um, Carolyn and with Amy in her role as on the finance committee and also on the town capital committee. Great, well, thank you very much. I just wanted to uh, touch base on that just because it has been talked about in the past and we, such as the HVAC and some of the other items and, and I wanna make sure that we're thinking ahead um, for what we need to do for the schools. So um, thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. Do we have another question? Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go deal with my fighting cats. It's a fun life I have. It's exciting. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So the next, oops, let's see. We have up next would be the uh, Council on Aging. <coughs> like, and let's see. Hello. 
Hello, how are you today? I'm well, how are you? Thanks for being here and doing all this hard work. <laughs> Thanks. Um, want me to just kind of launch into an explanation of the budget you see before you? That would be perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Sure. Um, salary increases. Um, so as you can see, salaries are, you know, the bulk of the expenses for our town budget. Um, it's worth pointing out something that you don't see here is that our um, under the second line, which says COA coordinator, that's really the programs coordinator. That's um, our programs coordinator, Violet Suska's role. Um, that number is um, increased by our EOEA um, formula grant in the amount of $16,668. So her actual salary is, you know, quite a bit more than that, but it's one, but that it's, you know, supported in total by, by that. And so that her total salary is $42,770. I wanted to point that out because um, just to have a scale um, and it's much more appropriate to her role and what she accomplishes that, you know, the, the actual number of what she's paid. Um, is we, that a, is that only like for five years? How long does that last? Or is that it's, it's yearly, that, that number, $16,668 from the EOEA, which is not reflected in this budget, has been the same for the past three fiscal years. And I don't, um, the most recent census data has not been applied. The, um, the formula grant is a per capita grant that I think it's $12 per person 60 and over in our town. So if that number increases, um, so if the number of people 60 and over increases in Hadley, the number, you know, the dollar amount that we receive from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs will also increase. But I don't, I don't know exactly what to expect with that. I think population has been a little more flat, even with the 60 and older um, population than we expected. So I'm not sure if that number is going to grow. We thought it would, but I, I can't say for sure that it will. Um, but it's going to be $16,668 for FY23, I'm sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's been very stable. Um, as you know, the town, um, Carolyn is rec recommending a 2.5 cost of living adjustment for, um, um, for staff. Um, and so the, all of those numbers reflect that increase. The biggest, our, our, our main expenses are pretty consistent with what they've been. Um, there aren't really any major jumps, except for the fact that we are requesting um, funding to support a 19 hour a week administrative assistant position um, to, to offset, um, frankly, uh, the full time effort that Jane Nevin Smith gives to the senior center, um, which probably, I don't know how many of you know this, but she's basically you know, a full time employee working for free, which is not a sustainable situation and over time that's going to change her availability will change and so we want to look ahead and have you know an actual paid employee taking on some of those very meaningful and regular responsibilities including maintaining an accurate um, clean mailing list for our newsletter which gets mailed out to a thousand people um, every other month um, handling the nonprofit um, account with the Amherst Post Office, and also just handling a lot of the administrative details, like managing our, rece our reception volunteers, assigning them work, and my, my ability to kind of offload some responsibilities like building maintenance issues, um, and maybe even a little bit of bill paying, um, depending on the skill level of the person that we hire, and communications in general, social media updating, um, we just merged our uh, email correspond, our email, our kind of regular um, blast emails to the community to Mailchimp. I'd love to be able to hire someone who can oversee that process and and do that in, in some kind of reliable way. So I, we feel that seeking a half time position is a very modest step in the right direction for getting some additional administrative support. Um, I'm not sure if anything else is particularly noteworthy. Um, you might uh, dues, for example, is the is what we pay the the, the last 
the last line item, just to explain some things that might be opaque that you wouldn't have any particular reason to know the specifics of. Um, dues is what we pay the Massachusetts Councils on Aging, which is a membership organization of all COAs in Massachusetts. That's what it costs for us to be a member of that organization, which is very supportive, helpful, keeps us in the loop with what all the other COAs in the state are doing, very important to us. Um, the postage line reflects the cost of the newsletter, um, which is a really robust and wonderful um, thing that we create every other month that gets mailed out and emailed and is on our website. Um, the something that's changing is that the town, um, that the cost of our, our printer, um, the lease of our printer um, and that I had requested is going to be absorbed in a different line item that's covered in, an, in a different budget so that we don't need to duplicate work with that. So that would be, um, that's why that's zeroed out and that makes perfect sense. And I don't think anything else is particularly different or worthy of note. I'm The price of gasoline might be higher than originally predicted because, um, because I created this budget before the, the significant increase in the price of gas. We do have um, a $5,000 revolving fund for our van, also not reflected here. It usually just stays at $5,000. If there's any increase at the end of the fiscal year, it goes down, it goes back down to $5,000. And I consider that kind of a safety net for major expenses that could happen with the van. Um, and so I would have the ability to use some of that should our expenses with gas exceed the predicted amount here. Happy to entertain questions. My question would be um, one, I think it was last year or one of the years uh, recently, you did a, um, a, pro a new program where you in increased the van and you got a grant from PVTA. And just how did that go for you? Yeah, that went well. It's been, um, I'll explain that too, because again, that that isn't really, you don't see that here, but we are reimbursed for 50% of the cost of running the van, which means um, 50% of the driver's salary, 50% of the gas, and 50% of the estimated administrative overhead costs. You know, my time and Lauren Hannigan, our transportation coordinator's time. Um, so that's gone really well. I did prepare a pie chart that I hope you might have seen in advance um, that I sent when I prepared some notes for this budget a while ago. Um, and so I, the latest snapshot um, of the, the revenue that we've received from that grant, say from December, 2020 um, to November, 2021, which was the most recent full year of revenue that I could calculate when I created this was $10,188, it was $10,188. So we are, this budget reflects the entire cost of that program, but half of it is reimbursed by that grant. And Linda, I think, you know, Linda Sanderson can attest to that. We did, we get, we send a regular reimbursement request to the PVTA and like clockwork, they send us um, half of the cost of the program. And so it's been working really well. And we will, I think we're going to get maybe a little bit less than that going forward, but it won't, it, I don't, I don't believe that it's going to have any kind of it won't prevent us from providing services at the same level. Linda, may I ask, does that money go back into their fund, their budget, it's part of their budget or does it, it go goes back? goes into the town, that money. The town money. Right, back to yeah, the town. Yeah, it doesn't go to us, it gets right. reabsorbed into the general budget. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, think I remember talking about that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, I, all, I think <laughs> I should also point out that the friends of the council, the, the friends of the Hadley yeah. Council on Aging, it, it's much like the Library Friends, is a separate nonprofit organization that exists to support what we do, and they do that very generously to the tune of, um, for let's see, their contributions that they calculated for um, fiscal year twenty one was over eleven thousand um, dollars. They pay for the printing of the newsletter. They pay for a very robust database that we use that tracks an amazing amount of information called My Senior Center. It's proprietary software for councils on aging. They pay the yearly subscription fee for us to have that. Um, they pay for 
cleaning supplies. Um, during COVID, we really leaned on them for, um, for wipes, um, rubber gloves, uh, paper towels, um, disinfectant, all kinds of things. They pay for walk-off mats to just help keep the building a little cleaner. They pay for all the refreshments for friends sponsored events, which are considerable. So their support is very hefty. And again, that it's not reflected in this budget, but I feel I need to acknowledge that what we do and the, the style in which we have the ability to do it is greatly enhanced by their contributions, which are significant. Um, and I will say too that I was just doing a little bit of statistical um, work just to like out of curiosity, how many events did we sponsor in March, this very March, 241. And that, I know that sounds a little crazy, like how could that even be true? A lot of them are repeated. We have repeated fitness classes, um, dance classes, you know, foot care. Some of these things are kind of ongoing and repeated and might be done say 10 times in a month. So those things add up, but 241 activities, events, and classes in March alone. Um, we have an average of 70 people, 70 individuals coming through the building a day. And I'd say on average, we have um, 175 people coming, you know, unduplicated individuals coming through the building in a month. So we really are seeing some growth, especially as COVID risk has perhaps temporarily, but at any rate, we'll enjoy it for now. Things are a bit suppressed and we have been enjoying um, mask optional life and robust numbers and the, the pleasure of having every single room in use um, at one time, which I can't tell you how much that delights me. Do you also see uh, people coming from other um, towns? We do. do, we do. It's customary for councils on aging all over the state to, um, to be welcoming in for, for visitors from other communities. So we do, we, we see people from Amherst mostly. Um, but not just Amherst. Um, when we had the tax aid program, that's still going on. The AARP tax volunteers doing taxes for free for seniors, and we don't um, any anyone from any town are is invited to utilize that service. Although it's been by far more Hadley people than than anything else. Um, last year we acted as a regional hub and had many many Amherst clients, but this year it was mostly Hadley because Amherst did their own program. But just circling back, yeah, we do see people from out of town. Not the majority by any means, but they are welcome. We have some measures in place to prioritize Hadley residents to make sure that they have every opportunity to sign up for things first. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a little hard to maintain, um, but I like, I personally feel good about being able to welcome people from Amherst and any other community who wants to be there. I just thought maybe you might start seeing more and more because of the nice building and, and yeah. uh, how many yeah. programs you have and things like that. Yeah, I think I think so, Amy. I think that is what accounts for people from Amherst who yeah. don't have the luxury of a building like ours or easy parking. Um, mm. So they might use the fitness room, you know, or sign up for a class. And our our, our classes are very pop popular, and we're seeing you know some competitive demand for certain kinds of things. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I guess that's it then. Uh, uh, so we will continue to move ahead. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, the next on board, uh, we're doing pretty good on time too, we say. <laughs> Uh, would be historical. Don't, don't jinx it. <laughs> historical. Hi, everyone. This is Diana West. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I am the chairperson of the Hadley Historical Commission. And what I am seeing right now in front of me is not what we submitted. Okay, so, Diana, how about yeah. I explain? Yeah, yeah okay. I'll go for it. Uh, when historical first submitted, uh, they were looking for seven thousand dollars in, uh, and, and those are the program sheets that you have uh, that you received today that she submitted. The reason it came out as a request is because we kind of were going around and round about whether this is an appropriate way to fund it. And at one point, 
Um, it was, uh, we had talked in, about whether it would be uh, going to the CPA. It seemed like a good CPA project to do the historical science, which, which Diana will explain more what they're about. And that happened to be the, the, the point in time, Diana, where things got solidified and, and published. So okay. I will, I, I think, uh, and Carolyn and I talked about it a little bit earlier this evening. We recognize, yes, that you did request 7,000 in there. Um, so, uh, because at some point you said you talked to CPA people and then they, then you decided you'd rather go through the budget instead. And so you're back to where you started. So <laughs> this was not, uh, you take it from here. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Linda. Yes. So we have submitted a budget that's actually around $7,000 in the hopes of completing a project we've been working on for the past couple of years, which is erecting four signs in town um, that would have historical information on them in both English and Spanish. And as Linda said, we were hoping to go to CPA for this money, but then CPA turned around and told us, no, this wouldn't qualify as it comes under the concept of creating something new, which um, CPA is not. Uh, created for in regards to the historical um, line of what they do. So then we looked at our different options and we decided to come to you all first and attempt to get this to go through our budget. Um, as you can see in the past, we've had a very small budget and we have not used it as far as I know, as long as I've been on the commission, which I believe I joined in 2018. So um, we have been in sort of a rebuilding phase the past couple of years. And we now have um, six members. One member um, was voted on by the select board, but she has not been able to be sworn in yet. So we're almost up to our full seven members and we now have the time and energy to dedicate to get these projects done. So um, our original budget asked actually for $7,000 to do two different projects, but unfortunately with the most recent quote we've gotten in February, it looks like it would just cover the sign project. Uh, so that I believe in my narrative, I put in that it's estimated around $6,200 and we are asking for 7,000 for incidentals um, contingency. Uh, as we know, inflation is a little bit out of control right now. So we foresee between now and perhaps when we be able to get the money this summer, um, things could definitely change. Uh, so like I said, you guys are our first stop and we're hoping you will approve it, but we understand if this just isn't possible at this time. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, I have a, no, go, go ahead, Alexi. Oh, just a quick question. I noticed on the um, the estimate for the signs, well, I, I'm also, I've just, it's coincidentally, I've been sign shopping for my business in town. And uh, there's a couple of sign places in town and the prices on that estimate looked about the same from what I've been seeing from them for the same type of sign. Why aren't we using a local sign maker rather than a, someplace from New York? Uh, I'm definitely up for getting more quotes and looking into uh, local sign makers. This was um, one company that one of our members had done business with in the past. So she reached out to them um, to get this quote. Um, this isn't locked in in any way or form. Um, so this was just to give us an idea of what kind of money we would need and what we were looking for. Um, they have done other projects very similar to this in the past. So they also came um, with that recommendation. Great. I just want to say I've, I've heard the work. I've done dry tours with Denise, who's also my wife is on the uh, historical commission, and we've done some dry runs with the audio tour and read over the signage. They've done a lot of great work. Um, I'm really excited. I think it'll be a good uh, addition to the town to kind of call out the historical areas around town. Um, and I do think the CPA should consider this. I was looking through the CPA database uh on the communitypreservation.org backslash databank backslash projects database i highly encourage anyone to go there check it out you can look at every cpa project uh in the state and there is some precedent even local stuff uh like belcher town in northampton has used it for signage um in the past four years um so i think that this might be a great spot for the cpa um to cover so just to jump off of that, Dylan, um, we did reach out to some of those projects and what we understood was that the signage was part of a bigger project that had been funded through CPA, so then it could fall under that umbrella. 
that um, because it just wasn't specifically signage, uh, it could be funded through CPA because it helped um, go along with another um, historical preservation effort that the CPA funded. And it does come down ultimately to our current, our local CPA committee um, to say if it is or not. Um, the CPA commission, um, or coalition, I believe, did tell us that um, it does not qualify. Uh, I did try to make a good pitch for why it could fall under preservation, and I was unfortunately rejected in that. Um, I mean, I think that's a bigger issue overall of what qualifies as historic preservation, but that's a different road we'd have to go down, which we don't have time for tonight. A little, a little further back, the uh, Amherst uh, Cemetery in the middle of town that I believe used CPA funds to do their uh, uh, little disclaimers. You come into the park, talk, talk about the historic aspects. So maybe they would be willing to look back on some of the older CPA projects and see that there is some precedent. Uh, and I hope they do reconsider and hope, hopefully they give you funding. Because I think it'll be a great thing to kind of call out these historical buildings and uh, draw recognition to their historical importance in our town. They did a really good job. I can't wait for everyone to hear the audio um, and script that they worked on. They've done a lot of work. Thanks, Don. I'm looking forward to hearing it. I can see there's a lot of work done and they have been working on it for some time now. Um, I think we need to help, you know, we whether We'd have to look to see how to get it done. It's all taxpayer money, whether it be CPA, whether it be capital, whether it be budget here. It's all ta taxpayer money. They've worked on it really hard. They just don't know where to take it from. And we will try to work to try to fig help figure that out. Um, you know, let's look at it. Let's see what, you know, we don't want to ignore it. We, you know, you're just stuck in a tough spot right now. So let's see what we can do to try to figure out something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, I, I guess the um, thank you very much for uh, presenting. Thank you. Great. So we'll go on to the last item now that we have, and that is the Board of Health. Thanks, Amy. Uh, my name is Peter Lori Free. For the folks on the uh, call that don't know who I am, I am the administrative assistant for the Board of Health. I've been on board now for almost nine months. I'm on the payroll for a whole seven hours a week. Uh, I'm retired, as you might guess from the uh, from the video. Um, and uh, Dr. Susan Mo Mosler, who is the chairperson of the Board of Health, is also on the call. Um, why why are you listening to me versus Susan? Um, Number one, uh, in prior lives, I've prepared budgets, submitted budgets, and approved budgets. Number two, Susan beat me in a uh, two out of three rock, paper, scissors. And uh, apparently rock beats paper. So, uh, so, you, so you're stuck with me. Uh, the, the numbers, uh, I guess you can see those on the screen. So I'm not going to go into the numbers unless you guys have questions. Um, rather, what I'd like to talk about are the the three changes, uh, you know, for the future uh, of the Board of Health in Hadley. Uh, number one, uh, the hiring of a part-time uh, public health agent. Number two, uh, a new part-time nurse. And number three, uh, the uh, installation or the install and the launch of uh, automated uh, permitting application that the finance committee and the select board approved, uh, I'm guessing about a year, year and a half ago. We cut the check in June of uh, 2021. It's finally being delivered, but I'll, I'll get into that uh, in a moment. The big change is um, what we're gonna be doing with um, inspections of food establishments, hotels, motels, uh, as well as overseeing all the efforts around uh, Title V uh, septic uh, system installations, upgrades, perk tests, uh, all of that stuff, as well as uh, effectively and efficiently dealing with um, uh, tenant concerns or tenant issues 
that, uh, that are brought to the Board of Health. Um, so what have we done in the past? Well, in the past, what we've done is we've used a third party vendor to do all of our inspections. So again, so this is food establishments, this is um, you know, grocery stores, uh, uh, restaurants, um, farmers markets, and they've also done inspections at hotels and the swimming pools of hotels, so on and so forth. Using the third party vendor um, is expensive. Um, it doesn't allow us to have the control that we, that we really need. Um, and furthermore, in doing the food inspections, um, the third party vendor did a great job in terms of going out, doing the inspections, identifying the problems, that was it. What was left was for the board, board of health was to now do all the follow-up, go visit these establishments again to find out, okay, what have you done? Is there an action plan in place? And are you hitting all the bases with regards to the action plan? Across the board of health, um, there, there's really nobody on the board of health, including myself, who has that expertise, who has the certification, who has any of the credentials that are really required. So we've made the decision um, that we're going to go ahead, uh, put somebody on the payroll part-time, uh, up to 19 hours a week, so it's non-benefited. Um, and the person is going to uh, essentially handle the, the food establishment inspection continuum, if you will, from start to finish. So if they go into a restaurant, they find out uh, that there are infractions, there's non-compliance issues. Um, this person is going to go back in whatever number of days is appropriate and follow up. And if the work hasn't been done, if the improvements have not been uh, addressed or have not been uh, finalized, action plan uh, gets uh, implemented. And you know, wor worst case, um, the person that will be the health agent will be credentialed and will know how to go ahead and shut down that, that uh, operation. Not that we're looking to shut down uh, restaurants or grocery stores or anything like that. But um, we feel as though that um, you know, the, the residents and the guests that, that come, to, come into Hadley to dine or to shop um, are owed uh, you know, the ability to walk into a restaurant or to a store or to a hotel, a motel that is safe. Um, they've done everything that they're supposed to be doing in terms of preventing foodborne illnesses. Um, and by having uh, folks continue to uh, you know, frequent uh, establishments in Hadley, that helps preserve you know, things like uh, the lodging tax as well as meal taxes, both uh, very important revenue streams. Um, the person that we're also going to be recruiting will have uh, oversight responsibilities for, again, all the Title V um, perk tests and, and things like that um, that come into play and, again, address uh, tenant issues um, that, uh, that require Board of Health um, intervention. Um, are there any questions uh, before I move into talking about the nurse? No. Uh, no. Okay. That, that, that I'll keep going. Um, the nurse is not a new position, as you guys know. Um, the nurse uh, that we have uh, working in the town of Hadley, um, she's stationed primarily at the, uh, the senior center, providing services, education, uh, previously COVID testing and uh, COVID uh, education and whatnot. Um, she's on the payroll for seven and a half, seven and a half hours a week. She was recruited when uh, Marge retired a couple months ago. Um, she's a registered nurse and she works out of um, uh, Cooley Dickinson. Um, she's been a, a really great addition uh, to, the, to the Board of Health and to the town. Any questions about the nurse? Okay. And, and uh, lastly... Just oh, more, yeah, more question on the nurse. So I'm just trying to see what the difference is. So you were at, um, you, you, because I thought you were increasing the nurse. So you were at 9,800 and we're going to be going to 10. So it's just a $254 increase from the last budget. Correct. So 
it's really not anything new, too much new. No, it, it, it's just a, uh, a new way of doing things. Um, this person has a, a fresh set of eyes, if you will, and has different, different experiences. And again, what uh, she's going to be focusing more on, um, on the education, the health education. And again, uh, she continues to uh, remain stationed um, you know, at the senior center. She's also okay. offered to us uh, a lot of flexibility in terms of, you know, if more hours are needed um, or if different hours are needed in terms of instead of working, you know, maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe Tuesday, Thursday, you know, whatever. So we have the flexibility uh, with, uh, with Alicia as well. Thank you. Um, the, the last item is um, the uh, automated uh, permitting application. Um, that again, uh, you guys approved, uh, I'm guessing a year, year and a half ago. Uh, again, the, uh, the application was actually purchased on June 30th, uh, 2021, the last day of fiscal year uh, 21. Um, when, uh, when we followed up with the vendor um, two or three months later, so now it's August, September of 2021, they hadn't really done any development work on behalf of what we had purchased. Um, they had not uh, uh, built the database yet. Um, one question about that is really an issue of capacity on their side. Um, they truly just didn't have the capacity, partially due to COVID. Um, and all of a sudden, their, their pipeline uh, had become active because now um, you know, the towns that had uh, put in orders uh, with uh, this particular uh, company and this particular vendor, um, they wanted their application. Um, so where we are with, with this particular application right now is the database has been built. The software has been developed. Um, one of the board members and I will be going through training um, in two or three weeks. Uh, the, the training will be done on site. Um, and what, what's going to happen is that instead of issuing uh, permits manually and receiving paper checks in the mail when uh, food vendors and hotels and motels uh, are paying their uh, permit fees, instead of taking paper checks, um, everything should be automated and digitized. So the days of you know, getting checks in, in the mail and running them upstairs to Linda Sanderson and having Linda stop what she's doing and enter it into the computer and so on and so forth. Those days are gonna go away. Um, the, uh, the applications themselves will be generated automatically um, and electronically. So they will be uh, sent out by way of email um, instead of having me send them, you know, uh, you know, manually prepare them and then send them by way of email and so forth. So, um, so there's really no change in terms of expense there. I will tell you that um, in the budget, there's a $2,000 uh, maintenance fee uh, and service fee each year um, for the uh, fiscal year 2022, because we didn't have the product, we're not paying the fee. Um, so, um, that's basically it. Um, the overall, you know, the bottom line increase from uh, uh, fiscal year uh, 2022, what was voted and what the town administrator is recommending for 2023, it's a 5% increase. Any questions? Uh, one question that's not, I don't see on here, water testing. Are you doing the water testing too? For like uh, the, um, you know, the pond and stuff like that? Um, I'm going to have to defer to Susan. I don't know the answer to the question. That's been through we, all we, Yeah. We do have uh, some test kits uh, left over because last year with the pandemic and uh, a lot of testing did not get done but I don't see that we have a specific uh, line item here uh, for the water testing. It's, it's, it's kind of a confusing area. Uh, in other words, what, what exactly are we responsible for testing? Um, I'm actually gonna be uh, 
sitting in on a webinar uh, from the state uh, that, that deals with, with this type of uh, issue. And hopefully I'll, I'll learn a little bit more about it. But I don't see that we have money in there for the water testing. I, I think you have money and uh, that was approved money out there. It's not. Oh, in right. This. We have we have the CPA funds. They extended us until I think July. Yeah, I just was wondering if it was something you were still doing, if you were work, if, if it was something that was maybe part of this new person or how you're handling. I just was curious about the water testing. That's all. We do not have a plan. Oh, OK. If that was to become something regular, you might, you probably would want to build it into the budget if that seems to be a regular task of the Board of Health. But as it is, you uh, there was 1,500 um, in the article from from two years ago, annual town meeting 2020, and uh, 280 of that was spent during fiscal 21, and nothing's been spent yet this year. So it would be good to to uh, hear what your plan is after uh, after you attend those seminars. Any, any other questions? Not for me. Not, not for okay. me. Great. Well, thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Well, we moved right along through those. Right so, on schedule. Uh, yeah, that was, that was great. So we generally don't have, uh, since we contract out the veteran services, we don't generally have anyone come, although we can send questions if you have any about it. And if you have any questions, we can send them along, but we don't have a lot to do with this budget we contract. Is it through the city of Northampton, Carolyn, or is it the, um, through the city? Not the county. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's regional. It's it's through uh that I think their main office is Northampton. Right. So that's uh we contract the contract price is twenty six thousand here. Yep. And here's our Memorial Day expenses. We have to pay burial, certain burial expenses, and they expected that to go up. And then the veterans payments we pay out to our local veterans according to uh, the uh, information given to us from Northampton about what they're entitled to. And then about a year later, we get about 75 to 80% of that back as, as revenue, it comes back. So I have questions. I, I'm glad to see the uh, Memorial Day um, expense in there because I know that the parade um, is, we're looking forward to that. Um, so that's great. And I did have someone ask me about that. So that's good. Um, the Burial expense, what, you know, I can understand why we, they, that's part of what we do, but what, it's kind of odd that I don't even see anything in 2020 is at zero and okay. access for 2021. There, there are only special circumstances, Amy, and I don't oh. know why it went from one to four when we didn't spend it, but that's what they, they, uh, that they said they were anticipating higher needs in that area. Um, All right. Do you, if you want to send a question along, we, we can do that. Um, I don't recall speaking with them about, about it specifically. Yeah. No, I, it's, I just, I, you know, it was zero to four and I thought people yeah. would pass away before too. So I'm just, why? Oh, they, they just don't necessarily come to the VA for their burial expenses. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they pass away. But Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So maybe, um, do they, we have to reimburse them? They pay out and we reimburse or something? I, I don't I know. Honestly, I honestly don't know what the circumstances are. Okay. I, I can reach out to the coordinator there, Steve O'Connors, and ask him specifically. Is that, is the Memorial Day expenses, that is that just, uh, what's wrapped into that? Is that the cost for busing uh, to each one of the cemeteries to do the salute? Or is that something separate? It's not for the parade specific, is it? Part of the police duties for the parade, and 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 all the DPW barriers and stuff to close well, did, I think this came up, didn't it? They were looking for the funds, and I thought that's what that was for. And then <coughs> this didn't cover it all. I, I and I'm yeah. sorry, I forgot the details that what it does cover. But Talk I know that 
hot dogs. Yeah, it was the hot dogs. Yes, it covers the hot dogs, but everything else, um, I, I would like to look at that next year um, because I think um, there was money that people paid out of pocket for some additional services to, to assist with that parade. So I'm going to get some more details about that for next year. I thought the Legion did the hot dogs. I think they do the cooking, but we provide the hot dogs. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I know one of the, the issues was, sorry, what was that? No kielbasa? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know one of the things was, Denise was uh, worried about getting buses um, and making sure that's in future budgets to make sure that uh, future, future it's not running around trying to resolve that, which sounds like. A yeah, I'll be taking a look at that for next year. Great. Maybe it could be borrowed out of the burial expenses line if we don't, that doesn't get used. Actually, even this year, I wonder, since nothing's been used, it would be, you know, when, when we talk with him, Carolyn, we could, or when, when you call him, not, I don't know how many, a thousand or 4,000 covers. I, so I don't, I don't know what the. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask him about that. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Any questions? <laughs> no. Oh, no. That's never changed. How about we, we move on? Move on. The easiest one. <laughs> and, okay. We, we want to make sure we cover everything with you. Absolutely. And I, I think we're going to have to do, uh, we're adding the Hadley Media onto the hundreds on Monday night. Is that right, Carolyn? Yep. I have not heard back to see if he can make it, but I did um, let him know that it would be on next week's. You say Monday? Um, I did say Monday, but I don't think I meant that. Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday yes. Okay. You've got your schedule for Tuesday and then for Thursday without any departments. By then you should be through anything, but if there's a department that can't have, won't have made it or if it runs into a long meeting, if you need to spill over into um, Thursday with uh, departments, that, that's sort of your backup. I'm really hoping not to spill into Thursday. I'd love to go to Margarita Madness. Huh? <laughs> well, we we can just move the look. If we advertise it at a time, we can just move it over there, can't we? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can just use cell phones for the Zoom in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just, give, just give me enough, enough notice to change the posting. Okay. <laughs> we can work on that. When everybody, they ask where it's going to be, I said, Margarita Madness from the chamber is going to be at the roller skating rink. They're like, roller skating and margaritas don't seem to <laughs> We're going to need the, yeah, we're going to need that ambulance after all. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's revenue on every ride to the hospital, isn't there? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Could be. So, you know, do your best for the town. Yes. Uh, no, don't get hurt. Uh, anyway, are we, uh, is that it? I have one more thing for next Tuesday. I saw, uh, we got a bunch of invites that went out to Google calendar invites. I saw next Tuesday, it was at 4 PM. Was that correct? Or is it? No. At okay. No, 530. I'm glad. 530. I think, yeah. Right. <coughs> All right. 530 Tuesday. We'll see. We'll see you guys then. All right. Okay. Motion. Uh, motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.